Well, guys, uh, welcome back to the uh, Traditionist channel. This is going to be Philosophy versus Politics, Strauss and Friends, lecture number 23. Like Arendt, Leo Strauss turned to the ancients for an approach to politics that avoids what he saw as the blind alley into which modernity leads. But his conclusions was unique. Politics and philosophy are intrinsically in conflict. Strauss presented a critique of modern natural law and writes from the perspective of what he called the classical rationalist tradition, claiming that the former eventually leads to historicism, relativism, and nihilism. His controversial theory of esotericism in persecution and the art of the writing argued that political philosophers face the need to dissemble into their public works. Strauss' work has had a major impact on neoconservatism in the United States. Background to Strauss. Leo Strauss was a scholar of history of political thought, who developed a distinct view and eventually a controversial political reputation. Through his students, he played a role in political theory and, and even the U.S. government of the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Strauss' work is driven by his question on what are the legitimacy and justice of a political order, in particular, the liberal republican constitutional regime to be based. Philosophy must try to answer this question, but the answer must lie outside the political domain. In other words, there must be a non-political foundation or justification for any political regime. Strauss believed that the dominant modern answer to these questions were inadequate and, in a sense, ignored the question these answers eventually lead to the troublesome implications such as relativism, which deny the real value of political norms. In contrast, he felt that ancient and medieval thinkers had addressed the question better and had been driven to a plausible answer which he wanted to revive. Through the problems of relativism, the absence of any adequate foundation for politics, point to the fact that modernity or the Enlightenment was already a wrong term, Strauss critiqued the modern rationalist tradition of political philosophy in favor of an older rationalism from Plato to Machiavelli. Strauss' analysis of the modern age. Strauss' analysis of modern age is given by his most famous book, Natural Right and History. Strauss believed that modern political thinkers such as Locke rested their views on a totally different basis than the ancients, reality rather than moral ideals. Moral Modern science accepts a non-theological universe, unlike either Aristotle or the religious middle thinkers. For those philosophers, the universe and everything is purposive. Humans have some telos, and to achieve it, they must acquire virtues. Traditional political philosophy believed that political society could rarely be good and was prone to decline because a just and good regime requires virtuous rulers and virtuous citizens, ideals that are difficult to actualize. Political philosophy could only describe the necessary conditions but not procedure to them. Thus, they accepted the distinction between the real and the ideal and used the ideal as justification and guide even though the real could never be fully actualized the ideal. After Machiavelli, modern political philosophy tried to design procedures that would lead to a just outcome without presuming virtues on the part of the officials or citizens, but to do so meant lowering the ideals. Political society was to be based only on rational self-interest and natural law, meaning that nature, human nature, is sufficient for a just or good society. Modern liberal republicans believe that the ideal society can be actualized but only because their ideal is not very ideal. But the idea of natural law didn't make sense. After Newton became modern science and metaphysics regard nature as value neutral, modernity believes that value arises in human experience and history. The Strauss claims the modern political tradition was gradually forced in its eternal self-criticism to undermine any notion of natural law, leaving it with nothing but historicism. Historicism is the sense is a kind of relativism. It just means that the answer to the question, what is good or right, is whatever some society at some point in history say is good or right. In effect, it is power 
that determines what is good or right because it is those with power who determines what society says. In fact, the modern tradition went down a road that ended with positivism, which denies the possible truth or falsity of value claims, historicism, which makes values relative to historical periods, and nihilism, the claim that all is power. Modern political theory ends up undermining its own ultimate notions of the norms of political life. Strauss' political lesson is, modern natural law won't do. We need some kind of pre-modern notion of the virtues as in Aristotle. Lies of the past. Strauss' careful reading of the old political tradition from Plato to Machiavelli revealed a deeper subplot to this story in his controversial persecution and the art of writing. Strauss argued that ancient and medieval philosophers could not be honest because they had to protect themselves from political authorities. Political philosophers had to write in a double fashion with an exoteric meaning for most readers and an esoteric through reading for the few who could all read between the lines. Strauss' arguments start with Plato, where his views get strong textual support. In the dialogues, Plato can have a character say something while he himself may be saying something different, discernibly by the conditions in which he puts the character. In addition to social danger, there is also a philosophical reason that political philosophers will inevitably say something that others won't like, like philosophy is satiric, meaning skeptical. In conclusive, philosophy is an attempt to know the whole, the context of all things, hence the foundations of everything. Political philosophy seeks to know the role of political life and the regime in the whole, hence its foundation. The degree of philosophy is inevitably interminable and incomplete. Philosophy seeks but can never know the whole. This explains why Strauss is ultimately a follower of Plato, read in a certain way. Most of Plato's dialogues end in an aporia, an undecidable situation. Even in dialogues, where a conclusion seems to be reached, Strauss believes that there are clues showing that Plato does not wholly believe the conclusion. Strauss is saying that if we want to attempt to both be political, which all citizens, including the philosophers, must be, and to philosophy, which mostly only philosophers do, we are trapped. We seek to live in the good life and to live in the good society. To do so requires knowing what the good and the good society are. That knowledge, rationally pursued by philosophy, is known to be ultimately unavailable. By nature, philosophy reveals the lack of known foundations for our necessary political activity. Strauss' historical and political point is that the ancient and medieval philosophers found a way to live with an unbridled gulf between a virtuous, controlled form of political life that referred to a transcendent set of norms that could be neither known nor achieved, did not solve the problem, Live with it in a wrote it and wrote in a dual fashion, exoterically and esoterically. They pursued philosophical knowledge of the good and showed that it was unavailable esoterically but simultaneously. It was a public commitment to a set of moral and political norms and values. Strauss thinks their way of living with this unbridled contradiction was better than the modern way of trying to leap over and solve the contradiction by attempting to merge the ideal with the real, which leads to a lower ideal, a reality without the discipline of unactualizable ideals. From a Straussian point of view, Plato faces the deep problem of the contradiction between philosophy and politics, but Aristotle does not. Aristotle describes the virtue that a well-dressed Athenian gentleman ought to have to make society in which people are likely to achieve happiness. From a platonic point of view, is already skirts the real philosophical problem, which is whether happiness is good. Nevertheless, a virtuous society ought to probably be left to Aristotelian gentlemen, who have a pre-modern understanding of the virtues and their inculcation, rather than a modern natural rights view that undermines itself and do not make their rules of living dependent on the uncompetable philosophical quest, while leaving room within the polis for philoso philosophy to continue in its impossible task. Strauss and Kojevi. Strauss corresponded with, an, uh, an, uh, among, with, among other prominent philosophers, the Russian-born Alexander Kojevi, who had 
enormous influence on the development of French philosophy from 1940 onward. And Kojevi's thought was based on reading of Hegel through the master-slave dialectic of the phenomenology. Hegel believed that history ended in 1806 when Napoleon marched into Jena, and he, Hegel, completed the phenomenology. All the necessary stages of mental and political evolution human beings had to go through were completed by that point. In effect, Napoleon brought to Jena a society of freedom, law, and equality. Based on science, not religion, there would be no more major qualitative changes in human mentality and politics. Kojep provided a de-Christianized, non-idealist atheist Hegel and a philosophy of human history that led to the position was curiously indifferent to the differences in political economy among liberalism, social democracy, and Marxism. Strauss and Kovchip agree that the central issue of political philosophy is on what can be constitutional state be grounded. They also agree that the ultimate choices were first Strauss esoteric religion friendly skepticism, second modern historicism, relativism and nihilism, which no one can believe any any ideals or three cogest views that history as a definite objective through their action and internal goal, there is no transcendent, but there is an immanent law of human history. Strauss and neoconservatism. Strauss and Straussian art credit with influencing recent neoconservatives, but it's important to know that the term neoconservatives has been used to refer to two different groups. First was a group of socialists from the 1930s and 1940s who eventually were driven to the right by some combination of revolution, revolution at the Soviet Union and revolution against student revolts and race riots of the 1960s. These thinkers were influential from the 1960s through the 1980s. The term was then revived by many to refer to members of the George W. Bush administration and others in the early 21st century who had advocated the mus muscular use of the American power to create and enforce democracy overseas in his, this group that Strauss has influenced. But many political theorists of the last 20 years who have a communitarian or more realist version of liberalism have also been influenced by Strauss. In Strauss Strauss has fostered a mildly conservative version of liberal republicanism, liberal republicanism, without conservative spirit behind it.